The London system of the black pieces, the French defense. Isn't it the most annoying opening of all time? It's annoying for me too. That's why I decided to do a four to five to even maybe six or seven part series on how to beat the French defense with the advanced variation, which is E5. In this part one, we're gonna look at games throughout history. So we have a game from 1620, then we have a game from the 1850s, and then finally we have a third game in this video, a game from the 1890s. So I hope you enjoy this multiple part series on how to beat the French defense. Today we're gonna be looking on how to beat the French defense. I'm gonna use two books, The Complete French Advance by Evgeny Shveshtikov and Knight C3, The Main Line. I've had a couple requests for the advanced. Okay, let's go for the advanced. Okay, so this is the book. Uh, I love this, the color of this book, first of all. And he has a forward by uh, Anatoly Karpov, I believe. It's a really nice attacking game, and it's super, super old. This was played by El Greco. El Greco played an N. So when I put this on the, on the left, so the most left uh, name means that they have the white pieces, always. So you're also learning a bit about annotation. And the black pieces is NN. NN means not known. So we don't know who this is. Um, and you'll know why, because this is a game in played in 1620. E4, E6, D4, D5, E5, right? C5, C3, and this is the first move that we see that's kind of weird. Black takes here. And so usually you're not supposed to take, ooh, somebody followed me. So. Usually you're not supposed to take here right now as the black pieces. This is the common uh, theory uh, because you want to hold off that taking and bring your pieces out and put pressure on D4 because you see D4 is the breaking of the structure of the white pieces. You don't want to give up all your pressure immediately by directly taking and then you don't have a pawn to always keep up with that pressure, right? So here, El Greco's opponent does a mistake and takes on D4 immediately. And so this is just a positional mistake. You're not going to lose the game because of this, but it's an early taking, right? And we've learned from this since then. So C takes D4. And Shveshnikov says, of course, the exchange on D4 is premature because white gets the C3 square for his knight. This is interesting. This is what I did not say. Okay, so takes. And here, I think it's directly bishop B4. Yeah. So bishop B4 could be annoying, could be not. But we know that since this pawn is out there, now we know to play knight C3. Black does another bad move. Bishop takes c3. So I'll, I'm just going to promote this. Oops. Promote this. That's the main line. Okay. Bishop takes c3. C takes c c3. And suddenly we see a rise in white's position just positionally. So we see that bishop a3 would have this entire diagonal to ourselves because black does not have the luxury of having a dark, dark squared bishop. Dark squared bishop here. They traded it off, which means that not only did we take back, we gained their diagonal and with our bishop is going to now take up that diagonal. So knight c3 is ensued, bishop d3, this is just main development, knight g7, f4. So you see this f4, f5 plan, very nice. Knight f5, so black defending off of this because f5 was coming or an idea of that, maybe castles first and then f5. Anywho, knight of three, knight of knight of five, knight of three, castles. And now white goes on with g4. Super aggressive move. And I think knight of knight h4, yeah. Knight h4 is a common response to the g4 plans. Common response. I've had this played multiple times against me. Castles, knight takes f3, queen takes. So black gives in, queen takes, bishop d7. And here, I mean. This is just roaring for an f5 push. Pawn f5, knife f5. So queen h3 is played, threatening mate. g6. Mm -hmm. And f5. Wow. So here, what Wright really wants is f6, queen h6, and you can't defend mate. So f6 is a very common idea to create a mating net favorable on g7 for the white pieces. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So f5, blowing up the pawn structure. e takes is played. g takes. And now g takes is played. Because all the, all the way through, f6 is being threatened. So you have to take, essentially. 
And now here, rook takes f5. Crazy move. White bishops are deadly, exactly. And we're going to see this premise often in the French advance. The white, the, the white bishops, the light squared bishops, white light squared bishops are going to be absolutely detrimental to the black pieces. So this is a, a really good point for anybody who wants to attack in their life, like who really likes attacking chess. You generally want to generally want to conserve the piece that's going to serve you the most after the sacrifice for the attack. So the pieces that serve us the most are the queen and the bishop. And once we sack the rook, we're taking their light squared bishop and we're conserving the two pieces that we want. And so um, this is what has effect here. Now, not queen takes f5 because there's queen h4 defending h7. So bishop takes here. Very, very strong. And um, black resigned here. So let's look at this idea. Let's say rook here, giving uh, black some air. Check here. Now we have mate in three, apparently. Oh, wow. Um, white to play and mate in three moves. Um, pause the video to solve the problem. I'm going to go get some water. The queen h8. King here and now bishop g5. And basically, the bishops are just ugh, too beautiful. Too beautiful. And this was mate. This was mate. So, uh, on account of this, our opponent resigned. Okay, so our, our second sample game, as you can see on the right-hand side, is Louis Poulsen against Adam Schwarz. Played in Leipzig in 1879. Let's start it off here, boom. Louis Poulsen is a German player who played throughout the 19th century and today is known for his advancements in the French defense advanced variation. Here is his game against Adolf Schwarz. D4, D5, E5, C5, boom. C3, always play C3, defend the pawn. Def defend the pawn attack with the pawn defense. Okay, you always wanna take back with the pawn. If the knight goes up here, then you defend with the knight. Knight C6, knight F3. There you go. Queen b6. Well, now it's already already defended by a queen. So now you're good. a3, bishop d7. And this is where we learned this a3 move. It's the a3 system. So I've newly started to play bishop e2, but a3 I've been playing for at least five years. This is how I, I fought against the French for most of my time on earth. Bishop d7. So after b4, the idea, the original idea of playing a3. If if this, so we're gonna put a, um, we're gonna put a, a, a bad, um, we're gonna put a questionable move. If this questionable move, instead of taking d4, if you think that it's the same thing, it's actually not. Here we take with the a pawn. And this punishes black a bit because now we open a file to ourselves. So it's a semi open file, but we have that kind of event advantage and we can greater control the c5 square. So all to say, that this would be bad. And so our opponent here does the good move, takes here on, C, on, on d4. There we go. Knight ge7. So knight c3. Knight f5. I said, as said prior, knight a4. Okay, so this is also good plans to always get, okay? So we've learned that the knight scales up like this. Black wants to always put pressure on this pawn. Um, here, black cannot take because of danger levels. So this is also important to mention. Queen c7 was played. Beautiful. Okay, bishop b2. Bishop e7. And rook c1. Rook c1, what does rook c1 threaten? b5. And so here, uh, black responds with a6, I believe. Yes, a6, and now knight c5. This rook c1 move not only threatened b5, winning a piece, right? But after that's defended, now we can play knight c5. And once you take, which in the game happened, rook takes, and we continue to have this pressure on the c-file. Uh, and notably, this rook continue to, continues to pin this knight. It's very, very nice. And also, the rook is active. Super active rook. Rook takes c5, castles, and bishop d3. Very sick. Look at the development here. Okay, this bishop is bad behind the pawn structure, but so is this one. So this is the common trade-off. And so the knight goes there, knight fe7. And here, um, Poulsen illustrates the masterclass. Bishop takes h7. The German gift. Uh, and basically, you're sacking a piece, 
to get a discovery attack with knight g5. This is really nice. And this is, wow, This what a unique game. So king takes h7 was played, and now knight g5. Okay? So the king went here, but if king g8, we have queen h5 threatening here, and uh, basically, let's do rook fd8. We can take here check first. And rook c3. Oh my god, that's crazy stuff. Crazy. Let's do a brilliant move here. Rook c3! Some crazy stuff. Okay, so rook c3 would be would have been winning. So king g6 was played. And here, our boy, our boy Louis Poulsen makes a mistake. Believe it or not, believe it or not. So uh, these these guys are not they're not um, they're not uh, invincible. They do make mistakes. They are human. And now we have the miss of the game. So our opponent, uh, our opponent, our Louis plays queen g4. After check, the appropriate win. So queen g4 was a mistake. Here, queen d3 was the winning move for Sean. Sean, you asked about this, right? So queen d3 was the original winning move here. Threatening knight takes e6. So... Now that we know what this threatens, which is knight takes e6, how does black get that availability to defend this? How is black able to defend this? So there's many uh, routes. There's f5 attacking this queen. On f5, there's simply takes, right? Does takes works? Oh, takes, the king takes. Black is fine here, apparently. Wow. So it's not f5. Well, f5. But then queen, okay, so this is what the engine is saying. f5, queen g3 prolongs this knight takes e6, right? And if f4, we have queen g4. And there's nothing you can do now. I mean, you can do b6. I'm going to do this. Oh, this loses. That's a thing of beauty. That's a thing of beauty. So all to say f5, but this is still good for white. So try to try to figure out what's the what's the actual defense here for the black pieces. It's super deep. The defense here that was appropriate was f6. So you don't want to go f5 now because this runs out of uh, it's, it's not timeless, which means that you're attacking my queen to prevent this discovery, but I can play queen g3, right? By doing f6, you're attacking this vulnerable piece. And now I have kind of a fire under my butt to do this now. And if I do, king f7, and this saves us, right? Takes, takes, we saw this. And here actually black has compensation for the damages. This is equal, says the computer. Even though white have two pawns and a rook for two pieces. Completely equal. Really, really cool. So here, f6 was a miss. Okay, so now queen g3, still threatening. Now we're threatening this for real. Threatening knight takes e6 for real. Okay. Queen c8, defending um, queen c8, and now rook c3. Bringing up the reserves. F4. So rook c3 also threatens this. So f4, queen g4, knight f5. And now rook h3. Wow, threatening mate. And here I think the only uh, defense is rook h8, right? Rook h8 was played indeed, and now knight takes e6. Check. Discovered check on the king, king f7. And here we have... Uh, queen takes f5. Ay, 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 ay. King e7. Queen g5 check. King here. Queen g6. King e7. Queen takes. Ay, 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 ay. Wow. 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 What? Wow. 
Poulsen, so here it says, Poulsen realized the central blockade, the idea of the central blockade many years before Nimzovich. So using the central blockade as a ways, as a means to attack the king. Wow, insane. So that's sample game number two. Our next sample game, ladies and gentlemen, e4, e6, d4, d5, e5, c5, c3, right? What we've been seeing, I'm just looking for the divers diversification of the game. So what marks it, and it's bishop e2, isn't it? Okay, bishop e2. This third and next game is actually a loss. This game was played by Wilhelm Steinitz, the first world chess champion ever from 1886 to 1894. And we have the pursuit of what black takes here. So black can take here on d4. Um, still not insane, but okay. C takes d4, knight h6. Black will often decoy their knight on h6. Okay, so knight c3, knight f5 is probable. Yes. It's a classic maneuver. Let's go knight of five, knight, eight, knight a4 is played. I um, recommend against this. So don't do that. Check, king f1. Okay, don't do that. Don't do that. This is the game, so mm -hmm. it is what it is. Uh, this is gonna be a long game because it's Steinitz. I knew it. Oh, it's not. It's not? It's a 19 move game, okay. So there's a trap or something. This is exciting. Bishop d7, bishop d2 attacking the queen, queen d8, and now bishop e1. They play rook, rook c8, rook c1, knight h4, knight c3, knight takes f3, bishop takes f3, queen b6. Knight a4 again. If queen takes, we can... Oh. What happens if queen takes? Okay, so what was played was queen d8, but if queen takes here, we can take on c6. We can take on c6, and now if you take, there's no check. The bishop e1 was crazy. This, this goes crazy, this goes crazy. Queen goes back to d8, folds, and we have h4, love it. This is a double exclam all the time. Knight takes e5. Wait, we lost this? Oh no, the white pieces lost this. Okay, so we're giving a, a, a sample of loss. A sample of loss indeed. Rook takes e8, queen takes. Knight takes e5 is a genius, by the way. So, um, if takes, which is bad, we have rook takes c1, queen takes, and now bishop takes with the pawn up. And so h4, mm -hmm. bishop e2, knight c4. Wow, Steinitz really lost this. Bishop takes, b takes, bishop e7. Yeah, this is losing. Uh, GG's. Um, so yeah, this was the game. Yeah, too much. I, I think King F1 was bad, and from here, like you can't you can't get your pieces out, and um, just mixed up with terrible plays. So, all to say, ladies and gentlemen, uh, if you want RPGN, join the Discord, and I will paste it in one of the columns. Actually, let's do it right now. So in that last game, you can see how White gets punished by not developing and not castling. Playing a double move like knight a4 is detrimental to your position, and things can go especially south if you play king f1, something that ruins your castling opportunities and puts your entire position at a weakness. We see here even the first world chess champion getting caught in the French defense advance played badly. Go sub to the chess nerd, there we have the channel.